A very subtle point you made that might not be picked up on everybody is you mentioned the GLUT1 transporter as opposed to the GLUT4 transporter. And if my memory serves correctly, the brain has GLUT1s as opposed to GLUT4s and GLUT1s are insulin independent. Is that correct? Yeah, for the most part, I mean, it, they're, they're insulin independent. I mean, that's, that's to my understanding. Um, and why that's interesting is because it seems a bit counterintuitive that a condition that leads to insulin resistance, of course, type two diabetes is the essence of insulin resistance. It seems counterintuitive that that would produce a hypometabolic state in an organ whose glucose transporters are insulin independent, except when you explain it the way you did, which is it's not the insulin resistance of the GLUT1 transporter that's the problem, the way it is for the GLUT4 transporter in the muscle. Instead, it's the actual mechanical disruption, if I'm understanding you correctly, of that transporter because of the way it's no longer presumably held in place by the barrier itself that allows glucose to get across. Is that, did I, did I understand exactly. that correctly? Okay. hundred percent correctly. And I mean, this is, you know, this isn't like dogma. Like this is like, this is definitely known. It's definitely where I'm heading. It's my opinion, but there is evidence of it. And I think, I'm, I think it's time to explore this evidence a little closer and a little deeper because um, yeah, type two diabetes, and it you know you hear the the term type three diabetes, right. and I think people think about it in the way of the brain being insulin resistant, and you know maybe there's something to that, but I you know I don't know if that's exactly what's going on. I think the type two diabetes is disrupting the blood brain barrier through um, a variety of mechanisms, including you know the the advanced glycation end products and the vascular. I mean, the vasculature disruption in type two diabetes is well known. I mean, they have all sorts of you know problems, right? Retinopathy, that you know the yep. the neuropathy, like all this. I mean, they are they they are disrupting their vasculature, including these tiny tiny little blood vessels that are like smaller in size than are like the diameter of a hair. Those things are like disrupted at the blood brain barrier and when you disrupt them your their blood flows decrease and the transporters are going down you, i mean there's all sorts of problems and so i think um it, you know fixing the diabetes obviously would be like <laughs> the you know downstream thing to do but like it's kind of a new mechanism right yeah. it's a kind of a new way of understanding it and um you know so right in other words just, it, it explains the observation so there's an observation that is unmistakable which is type two diabetes, I don't know the number, but I think it approximately doubles your risk of Alzheimer's disease. So in other words, even if you're sitting there walking around with two copies of the ApoE3 allele, having type two diabetes means you might as well have a copy of an E4 allele from a risk perspective. And what this is saying is, well, it's not entirely clear at the surface why type two diabetes would impact the brain through the lens of traditional thinking of GLUT4 transporters, which are insulin dependent. In other words, it isn't just an insulin resistance problem, but I think these two other things matter, right? This, what you said about the microvasculature, um, again, what, what I think a lot of people don't realize is how destructive type two diabetes is to the kidneys, um, right? Because those tiny, tiny blood vessels, right? People are familiar with amputations and things that occur in digits because of that impotence right? All of these things where blood vessel is essential in small blood vessels. And so there's that which feeds into the vascular path that you've discussed, but it's this also this disruption of glucose, glucose transport directly across that transporter. So um, I think it's actually a very compelling uh, thesis for how type two diabetes could be acting via those two prongs um, to, to ultimately result in hypometabolism. I do too. Yeah. And, um, and then, of course, the cascade of inflammation that happens after that. So, um, you know, the other thing that's also very interesting is, and again, this, so we're talking about type 2 diabetes and very big implications there for the prevention of Alzheimer's disease, right? I mean, it, you, you, there's a lot you can do, as you've talked about, you know, to prevent and even, you know, treat in yep. a, with diet and lifestyle, right? Yep. Type 2 diabetes. Yep.